Hello everyone and welcome to this top 5 of backgrounds in Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. Uh, today we will be going through the best, or most interesting at least, uh, backgrounds for this set. And to explain, backgrounds are enchantments that can be your second commanders when uh, another creature has that ability to give you a second commander as a background. So we'll be, we'll be going through them, they are pretty versatile, they are not too amazing, they are not new, there are no new mechanics in them, uh, but they are cool on their own, they can grow your commander, which is always something pretty nice. So first of all, <laughs> I think this one is the best and that says a lot. What it does is it gives your commanders, whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, another target creature gets plus X plus X, where X is this creature's power. You see, it's not it's not too interesting on its own, uh, but you can think about what green commanders want to be a big dude. So in this set we have Skanos Dragonheart. It's a five mana dragon ranger, and when it attacks, it gets already gets plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among other dragons you control and dragon cards in your graveyard. So what I find interesting in this is that you will always, when you attack with Skanos, get the strongest amount of power on top of your power of Skanos and then it will give it back to another creature. So I think that's pretty cool and I think that's the best you're gonna, going to get out of the value of this card in this particular set. But there are a lot of things you can think about that would make Hardy Outlander a cool card. Going on to Noble Heritage, it's a bit of a stretch here but when this uh, commander ends the battlefield when you have Noble Heritage out um, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put 2 plus 1 counters on the creature they control. Every opponent that does, uh, you have protection from that player until your next turn. Uh, I think Lulu is pretty interesting here because they are a flying elephant. That's one thing that's interesting on its own, but also uh, being flying they want to have plus 1 counters. Um, and they can threaten uh, other players because... Uh, well, Lulu wants to be in a deck that has a lot of flickering or at least someone leaving the battlefield and Lulu herself wants to get back to the battlefield. So um, she says at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent con you controlled left the battlefield this turn, put a plus one counter on each tapped creature you control, then untap them. So Lulu also gives a uh, plus one count, that's one synergy there and the blinking also enables you that when your opponents choose not to take any plus one counters, you can keep putting plus one counts on other creatures than Lulu by flickering Lulu herself um, and then uh, putting the plus one counters on other creatures and well threatening your opponents like that. Raised by Giants is interesting because it's big numbers. Uh, it gives all your uh, commander creatures power and toughness, base power and toughness 10-10. The interesting thing here is mostly the flavor. Your parents taught you that strength can be nurtured and honed no matter one size. And the fact that this card wants to work with size is interesting for Kadira, color of the small, because, well, she likes small creatures and she is affiliated with size and then the small ones. So, and also because she wants to deal combat damage to a player because then her ability triggers. And as she has trample, it will become easier to get in for damage when she is a 10-10. Uh, when she deals damage for each token you control you create a 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature token and it starts out being pretty hard to get in with Kadira but when you have this 6 mana enchantment out it will be a bit easier. Sword Coast Sailor is a card that lets you give a creature unblockable when you attack the player with the most life or more life than um, uh, other opponents and well, there's one blue creature that likes unblockable, and that's Alora Mary Thief. Uh, she doesn't want to have unblockable herself per se, but whenever you attack up to one target, uh, attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. So at least you will be able to get in with Alora herself as well. That's something I could think of as she wants to be in a deck that has other unblockable creatures too. So I think that's a fit. <laughs> Cultist of the Absolute is a one mana background. That gives plus three plus three so one man and a half for an enchantment that gives your commander plus three plus three is pretty insane but also gives them flying death touch and when your opponent wants to target them they have to pay three life so a bit of uh, defense but at the beginning of your upkeep you have to sacrifice a creature and actually that's the favorite part about it to me 
because for example Bane Lord of Darkness wants your uh, non-token creatures to die and having the ability to sacrifice those creatures is interesting to him because if you're uh, if you do, your opponents have the choice of you drawing a card or you playing a creature with equal or lesser toughness than the creature that, that just died. Uh, you can play the, the equal or lesser toughness creature from your hand onto the battlefield. So that's cool. Uh, that was it for this top 5 and stay tuned because we will have a top 5 of the my most interesting cards uh, that are not legendary in the set and we will go through that in not too many days so i'll record it right now but uh, you'll see it a bit later so stay tuned